Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Well, I just love that opening shot of that monkey. He looks so happy. And um, I know I'm going to get some calls. He's not a stunt double. He's a new, he's a new monkey. Um, just like you have to get a new bond every once in a while, we had to get a new monkey. Um, the poor old guy was, um, the original monkey was made in the 30s, and uh, it was just too dangerous to transport him back and forth. So, so we've got the new monkey, and uh, of course he's got red pom-poms, and it'll be uh, a good red show. So today we're going to work on this huge still life. And I know that when I um, watch a show and I don't know it's going to be a second parter, I'm kind of disappointed at the end. It's like, ah! Got to wait till the end to, to find out what's going to happen. So I'm going to let you know up front, this is definitely a two-parter. It's a very complicated still life. So where am I going to start? With the red. I'm going to start mixing some paint now. I'm going to start with the red part of the shadow. So I'll take some red and mix it with just a little bit of the uh, Carbazol Violet. I want to get a nice dark shadow. Shadow of what? Well, I'm going to paint the shadow of the wine bottle first. I think that's dark enough, and I don't know since it's going to be the first thing on the canvas. We shall see. Uh, let's see, what brush am I picking? Good good large brush so I can cover in big areas quickly. So I'm going to start here on the edge of the bottle. Everything's about relationships. You can't really, uh, none of this will make sense until you put something next to it. So I'm starting in kind of an obscure place. That's a lot cooler than I normally would paint, but uh, I, can't, I can't pick it apart yet. It's just a little too early. Okay, that shadow goes all the way down here. I think it's a little too violet, but I can always add some more red to it. Red makes everything happy. Let's see, what happens with the shadow? So the, you have the shadow of the bottle and the shadow of the flowers. Yeah, San Benito County, where I live, is one of the best kept secrets in the, uh, our wineries. And uh, so I went, I went to a number of them and got different bottles. And my husband and I, we did some tasting. And, uh, or actually, he did the tasting. I was checking out all the bottles, see what I was going to paint. And uh, it's just amazing the variety of wine that we have here. Okay, so here's a good. Nice, good shadow color. I think that's a good start. And I'm going to go right down to the fabric. So I picked three items that are, that are typically uh, could be a, a show all by themselves. One is the wine bottle and all the reflections here. We're going to also do a clear glass vase with flowers and fabric and folds. So this is this ought to be a good show. A good couple of shows. Okay, where is there some more red? I'm going for the straight red color now. I'm starting in the background. You know, you know, I they're they're. Uh, <laughs> I always say to start with what you know you can do, and then um, and then you sneak up on what scares you. And in this case, it's not just because it's red that I'm starting here. I'm going to start in the background, and and I think I'll move from the background to the foreground. So there, there, there actually is a systematic, logical reason for this, this time. OK. I think that bottom, that tube, that paint came from the bottom of the tube. And it, it's not looking good. So I'm going to squirt out some more, because it, it looks like it's, it's going to have pigment in there that I don't want, and chunks. It must have dried out. And, and the reason it does that, is I probably didn't put the cap on tight enough. We were talking about gremlins in the house, not gremlins in the studio. There is no one to blame but myself here. OK. Let's see if this is any better. Well, it's a little better. I should have had a new tube. 
Okay, so I'm going to mix this with, uh, let's try some pink here. Let's see if we like that. You know what, that's just got, I'm not even going to use that at all because it looks really bad. It's a bummer to waste that paint, but you know what, I'm not going to put something that's going to fall apart on my canvas. Okay, so I'm trying a new, we're going to plan B. And I'm going to use quinacridone rose, which is more of a pinky color than I would normally use. And, oops, this is kind of got smashed in the transit. Every once in a while, paintings get off to a kind of a rocky start. And <laughs> this is one of them. This is just how it works sometimes. So I'm going to take quinacridone rose and some cad red. Oh, that makes a nice red. See, that was a happy accident. Okay, some cad red light and quinacridone rose. And we'll mix that red there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. We'll try again. So I'm going for the red in the background. I'm using lots of medium. And where is there some red? There's some red hair. And I can tell you right now that that, that is too purpley. Um, but I'm going to wait till I cover this section first before I play with that. Yep, that's better. I could use even a bigger brush for this, but I didn't bring one that was that any bigger. Okay. Ooh, I like this red even better. I'm already contaminating my color. That's wonderful. I'm going straight into this violet. Yep, that's better. It's also more harmonious with the shadow color. See, sometimes I try to fix things that aren't broken, and it's really the other neighbor that needs fixing and not, not the other color that I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's, that's happier. I do like the CADs though. The thing about the cadmium pigments is that they're, well, they are toxic. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful. You really wanna make sure you don't get that on your hands and, and uh, wash up quickly. But they're also very, besides being very strong, they're very opaque. Whereas some of the other reds that I use are very transparent. And sometimes you just need that opacity. Okay, that's good. I'm going to do the big masses first and play with the details later. I've actually timed some of these um, when I'm at home to see if I could get them done, you know, during a normal TV show. And uh, I have to allow extra time because I don't normally talk to people when I paint at home. Talk to myself, but that's different. Whoa, I'm losing the palette here. Okay. So where is there some more red? I need to go on the other side. And there's red on this side of the vase, and I'm actually going to cover up. There's some ribbon and stuff going on there, but I'm covering that up. I'll paint over that. I don't want to have to paint around it. That makes me tired. And also, I think I want to change the ribbon a little bit. So this is definitely one of those cases where you don't have to be a slave to your reference photo. Oh, 
I can spend hours setting it up, just getting it just the way I want it, just the right lighting, and then decide it's the next day it's just not quite what I wanted. It happens. That red is happy. <laughs> That's gorgeous. What are sad reds? Sad reds for me is when they're really muted, when they're, um, when they're dirty looking. I like bright reds. Depends on their level of saturation. Okay, where else is there some red? Right at the very bottom of the, and I left this in, that was actually on purpose. I actually left this little bit of red down at the bottom. I'm going to lift the canvas up. And you can see a little bit of red in the bottom in the photo. And I left this here for balance. Just like you have three three items in a composition, I was also conscious of three spaces, major major spaces of red, and um, echoing things in places so that so that everything's harmonious. Okay, there's a little bit of red on the other side of the bottle, but what I'm going to do first, well, maybe not. I'll, I'll try and stay on track. <laughs> Uh, I'll go ahead and paint the little bit of red that's over here. On the other side of the bottle. And let's see, what's going on? Is there mostly some flowers here? Might be a little bit of red down in here. And maybe... I'm just going to put maybe a little hint of it right here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Now what I'm going to do before I go on to the next area, because in the TV studio, and if you have a lot of lights in your house and it gets really hot, it makes it harder to blend later. And I didn't, if I go back to this later and try to blend it, it's just going to be stiff and be, it, it might not work. So I'm going to go ahead and blend these edges now. Whenever you do that, you need to use a paper towel, blend and wipe, blend and wipe. So I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm using very little pressure. I also think I need to add a little more red to this. This is very, almost too much liquid medium. Yeah, that's better. Okay, the other thing I really could play around with now um, is the way the brush strokes are. Let me, this, let me just get back and look at it. Yeah, they're, they're not a problem. Um, when I take a look at the way the brush strokes are on the canvas, I want to make sure that it's not all pushing down here. I want to make sure that they're, I'm very conscious of them pointing in directions. So everything is pointing toward this still life. And I don't want things pointing off the canvas and, and directing your eye to a place, to something else. You need to always move the eye back to, back to where you are. Okay, that's, that's good. I'm just covering the edges now. All right, that works. Now I'm going to go on to, I think, the fabric first. I'm really going to get in some of these bigger shapes here and work on maybe the bottle. We'll see, though. That's my plan. And save this whole vase for one whole show. But you know what? <laughs> I may change my mind halfway through. We'll see. Okay, so what do I want to do next? Well, I love the yellow on the fabric, and then there's some... Uh, you can't quite see because it's washed out in the reference photo, but there, the yellow is a lot brighter on the fabric right above the, uh, right above the dark navy blue. And there's also a... Uh, turquoise fabric in there too that's not evident as well in the in the reference photo. So I'm going to play up those colors and uh, make them a little bit more fun. 
put this down. All right, so first I'll start with the yellow. And I'm going to need some white to mix with that. So I'm taking, uh, wow, didn't clean my knife, so that, that's going to add some red to it. But that's all right. It should be, should be fine. A little bit of Indian yellow because a lot takes over. Now it's a little easier to add. I've got some chunks of white in there too. That's toward the end of the tube. It's a little easier to add more yellow to this later than it is to take it away because this is a very powerful yellow. So I'm going to understate it and maybe throw a little extra on top. It does seem real pale though. Yeah, it's just it's just a little too weak for me. That's better. If I look at some of the paintings that I have done over time, there's definitely, in the spring, I definitely explode with color. I do darker paintings during the winter months and uh, spring and summer. I definitely am affected by the seasons. Okay, so I want some yellow on this fabric. And where is that yellow? There's some right here. on the other side of this vase. Yeah, that's still washed out then I, more than I'll have it later, but I, want, I don't want to overdo it. And there's some yellow right here. First, I'm going to put it down and go to the edge of this. Then I'll move it up when I've covered the area to the red, because right now, if I do that, I'll get it contaminated with the red, and I'm not ready to do that. That will happen eventually. But I want planned contamination. I like that. I once had somebody said, oh, you use uh, primary colors like it was a bad thing. You know what? Use whatever colors make you happy. <laughs> I'm not going to be a color snob. If you, if, if you like purple, use purple. If you like all neutrals, that's cool too. Okay. My hesitation here is, is I'm not sure how far, you know, I do the drawing and then I decide later where I want to go with that. So I think I'll take this one, this side down a little bit further too. And do I want to take it all the way down to the blue? Maybe. Um, I think that'll be good. Now I, now I can get close to the red and start contaminating. I'm going to scrub it right into that, get rid of the pencil line. What I'm doing here is I'm getting rid of the pencil line and blending at the same time. It's also adding like a shadow color. I'll clean that up later, but that's a good good start. I want this to be not such a hard edge too. I really should wipe my brush first. Okay. Now I think it's that time for the turquoise. I'm going to use a million brushes. The only bummer about that is at the end of the night when you have to clean them. My gremlins don't clean brushes. Okay, so I need some turquoise. And yes, I'm turning that up a notch. And what did I use to make this still life? I didn't have, in some cases, I got tablecloths, napkins, 
um, cloth napkins, um, and if I didn't have just the right color, I'd grab a shirt out of the closet and put that down. Just use whatever you have. Love that. See, that, that turquoise next to that yellow, that, that's just a happy color. Okay, here's some more. Boy, I'm getting to the, to the, you see what I'm talking about? I get toward the end of the tube and you have just like, okay, when you're painting the house, do you ever just <laughs> not put the lid on, get these little flakes of paint that have dried up? That's just basically what's happened here. So I need to pull this off. And, I'm not, and it must be, it must be coming from the white. I don't buy the paint in the, they come in, I use a lot of paint, so you, I could actually buy it in, in pints or quarts, like they sell regular house paint in, but the problem is, is that it's cheaper, but that doesn't do me any good because it, it dries out and then you, you're wasting a lot of paint, so I'm better off with, with tubes that are this size and I typically don't have a problem that way. I can seal it better. And uh, it's probably, if somebody was meticulous and careful and cleaned the edges and, and was just uber perfect with their paint, then they could use this huge thing and they'd be fine. But I'm not. I paint and, and I paint. <laughs> Need somebody else to do that good stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the turquoise down. I take really good care of my brushes. I'm very careful with those, but even, even then I'll find one that, that I thought I had clean and I didn't. Okay, so where, where is there some blue? Well, this kind of looks white in the reference photo, but that wouldn't be as fun. And I didn't quite have a shirt that was that color. So it looks pretty faded out in the, in the photograph. So you just have to pretend that it was this blue. Okay, I like that. Kind of flat now. Now there's no, none of this blue sticking out on this other side, but I really like this for balance. So that's where I'm changing the reference photo and adding a little bit of this blue. I'm also conscious of not having these, these shapes be the same. That's a real weird shape. I'm gonna have to fix that later. I don't have to dress that yet. Okay, I'm going to go straight into this thalo turquoise. It's a very powerful color. I love it. I just, just have to be careful, though. And I overdid it. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to put a little shadow under this cloth, which, you know, if the cloth is pretty much invisible, yeah, so you can't really tell where it is, but it'll make more sense once I paint it. Okay, and now that I've taken some of that, I had so much of the thalo blue on my brush, I wanted to take some of it off. Yep, that's good. Okay, and now for the, the nice ultramarine. Somebody asked me what that object is on the, um, the white thing that's in the reference photo. And that's an egg. And why did I put the egg in the, <laughs> why did I put the egg in the, in the still life? Well, that was just because it, it needed a balance. We've got two heavy objects here. It was a nice neutral that would tie all these in together. And the other nice thing about an egg is that because it's white, I can impose lots of different color that will tie in both the bottle 
and the glass vase. It will tie all these elements together. So all of the colors in, in the entire painting will be in this one little leg, and that will unify everything. So it's going to be a cool thing. Okay, so we have to put some fabric down here. Let's grab a lot of this. What is this? <laughs> it's ultramarine blue. And let's see, I think I'll put, do the same thing I did with the red background where I put the shadow down first. So I'm going to start with, instead of the straight ultramarine blue, I'll grab, grab some of this purple that I already made up. It's interesting working on a painting this size. Um, if I was back and for, uh, at home in the studio, I would probably be raising and lowering, raising and lowering the canvas um, on my easel, or just work on a lower part at one time. But here, that would just be really awkward for <laughs> watching me move the canvas all around. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, the, the other ways that I would paint it too is if I, is just go ahead and get down here on the ground and start painting it. Okay, there's some, there's some shadow area there. There's shadow under the egg. Where else is there shadow? Okay. And if you don't like the way it's doing something, then I would, you know, some, then I will make up a, a more interesting fold. Because the folds also are directional too, and they aid in the composition, or they can really hurt a composition. And I've been guilty of both. Okay, so that's, that's good. And now I'm going to maybe add some folds that will make a little more interest. Okay, so we have some of the fabrics going this way. I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of drawing. And that's to help me have clarity on where I'm going to go with this, because I wasn't quite sure. Okay, so some of the fabric comes down like this. And let's see, there's some more. I'm going to have some, we've got fabric going that way, that way. So in order to, I'm going to lift the canvas up a little bit in order to draw this. Okay, so I think it would be happier instead of, if it, if it merges right here, that's really bad compositionally. You don't want the little little things kissing here. So we're going to move this up a little bit. And I'll have a, a fold here. And it's almost like a landscape where you've got a hill going over this way. And what else do we want to do? I'm going to go over to the other side and take a look at. Okay, we've got a hill going this way, and maybe it would make more sense. <laughs> you know I'm driving them nuts by getting down here like this. It's got to be hard. Okay, to go over here. And now I'm going to move over to the other side. I'm pushing everything, everything is, is pushing to this, this part of the canvas. Okay. Now I'll walk over here and see <laughs> if that's going to work. All right, now I'll start laying in some lighter tones and we'll see how that does. And if I don't like it, see, so you can t tell that I am. This was fairly flat. I'm making it up as I go along. So I'm going to paint and see what happens. If I don't like it, I'm just going to adjust it. OK, so I'm adding some white. Trying to find some room on my palette here to this ultramarine blue for a little lighter color. That's pretty. Yeah, I think it is that white that's, that I'm having a problem with. Okay. OK, 
getting a bigger brush because I'm covering quite a large area. Dip it in some liquid. Okay. Now when I'm drawing, it would be awkward for me to kind of paint this way, but, um, so, but when I'm just filling in some big spaces, I can do that. But what I realized is I almost, <laughs> I almost did one of those things where I've, I've got it resting here precariously, and the minute I start beating on it, it's, <laughs> it's going to fall and probably scare the you know what out of me. So um, I'm going to move it now so that that doesn't happen. See, now when I'm home by myself and I'm painting and I do this kind of thing and, it, and, it, and I do, <laughs> and I don't catch it and it falls on me and I got paint in my hair and it's all over the place, um, that's one thing, but, you know, <laughs> on the show that would not be good. But I have to tell you, yes, it does happen. Oh, I like that blue. Oh, a little darker bit to it. I, had, I was painting out on our, our main street for an event we had a couple weekends ago, and uh, I heard this little boy ask his mom, Mom, I want paint like that that sparkles. I want this shiny paint that sparkles. And, and I thought, how cool. You know, I, I, it was just wet. That was the only reason it sparkled was because it was wet. But I thought, God, how, how cool that he saw that. I hope she gets him some. We had, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had the Girl Scouts over at my house. They were working on their badge. And they're in the studio. And it was the first time I've ever seen anybody finger paint with oil paints. They did the most beautiful pieces. It was awesome. They were, they were so creative. And, um, and they painted their face, and they painted... Um, just about everything, but the, but the paintings that they came up with their fingers, it was just, they were absolutely gorgeous, and they weren't afraid, and they put color everywhere, and um, I hope you guys, you know, go out there and just give it a shot. They weren't worried about the outcome, they just did it. They were fun. In fact, they're coming over again for, for another badge project, we'll see see what happens, but it's wonderful energy to have in my studio. Okay, there's some blue. It gets very abstract. It's fun. Okay, I'm going to have to get down here so that I can reach the stuff down here. Problem is, when you get something, canvases that are this big, if I were to raise it up much taller, I, I couldn't reach the top, so. Someday I'll have a studio with ladders, like the libraries have. And I'd really be dangerous. It's probably just as well that I don't right now. I do get on chairs, though. OSHA would have a field day. I just won't tell OSHA where my studio is. Okay. This is a good base. I'm going to have to lift this up a little bit again and hope that I don't drop it, that I don't beat on it. So what's happening? Because I am conscious of not um, pushing. I, I'm actually applying less pressure here only because I'm worried about knocking it over. However, once I get home, I'll beat on it a little bit. I like some of the little happy accidents that I wasn't counting on when I'm blending this color. So you'll see that this is really 
not a lot like this part of it is not necessarily like the reference photo, but that was a good place to start. Okay, I'm going to get the bottom done here and then put it back on its ridge so that I don't knock it over. Sometimes when you can't see what you're doing, really cool things happen. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of light here. I'm putting in all the mid-tones, the mids and the darks, not really a lot of the light. So I'm going to have to put that in later. But that, that's for part two or part three. I tried sketching this on a, a smaller scale, and I just wasn't happy with it. Lately, that's all I've been working on is wine bottles and wine bottles and sock monkeys. Okay, now I'm going to stand back and look at it, and so right now it just looks really abstract, these wild shapes and colors, and that blue doesn't really make a lot of sense here, so I know what I could do, add, add some a darker value here, like that. I just grabbed straight ultramarine blue, and I'm going to pretend that this is a shadow. Isn't that cool? You just start pretending things. Okay, so that's a shadow. And I just want to continue that down, down here. Now, I could sit here and play with this the whole show, but I'd really be boring you. So I'm going to get this basically blocked in and move on to something else. Okay, I do like that better. Uh, yeah, that's better. And that's leading, that light area is leading you up to the egg. That's a good start. Okay, maybe we'll start working on the bottle now and, and um, just soften these edges and keep moving. It's hard not to play in one area when you're not quite, <laughs> when you're not quite through. But I'm moving on. I'm moving on to the bottle. Okay. When you move to a different area of a painting, and and you've been, especially what happens when you work in big spaces like this, and it's very abstract. It's really easy to get sucked into the painting, and um, so you're in a different mode uh, when you're doing that type of work. Than say if you're working on lettering on a bottle or, or something else. And um, I suppose if I ever reach mastery, I would be in that mode all the time. But you know what? I'm not there yet. So when I'm in different parts of the painting, I'm in, I'm in different moods in different places. So now when I get into this drawing phase of the bottle, it's going to be more clinical. It's going to be more... Uh, a little more left-brained until I start to get sucked in again, and then you won't hear from me for a while. <laughs> so, what am, I, what am I looking at when I'm looking at the bottle? Well, it's a lot darker, a lot darker in, in uh, the reference photo than it is in real life. So, and I'm going to add, I know what the bottle looks like, too, when there's no wine in it. 
and it's got more green in it. It's got a little more color. So I'm going to kind of pretend that that's happening too. All right. Um, let's see. Let's just see. There's some more red that I missed. How could I miss some red right here? And that helps the, sh the bottle have shape. So I'm going to add this darker color here. And I'm not even going to touch the flowers tonight, I don't think. And I have to be in a place for the flowers, unless it's one huge flower that takes up the whole canvas. OK. That's looking pretty good. You know what? I missed a spot right here. That happens. I'm just going to grab some blue. It needs to be darker down here. Probably could be using a smaller brush. But I didn't. OK. So this is really weird because things are starting to emerge. Right now, you still have this you know, fairly obscure can't stop playing with this abstract down here. And I need to put one object in, at least one object, so that it looks like something's going on. All right, well, I'm going to start. Where am I going to start on the bottle? With the red on the label. <laughs> Is that logical? No, it's just my favorite part. And it, out, of, out of all of Claire's wines, um, I love this label the best. So whatever artist, whatever artist did the label. You did good. I love it. OK, so here's some little flowers here. What else is going on? It needs a little, needs a little more orangey tone to it. And I'm not going to do the, I, I don't think the lettering on the bottle. Now, I will suggest it. And if I were, when I do commissions, commission work, yeah, I'd put in every letter. But I will just suggest it with color rather than put in each little letter. If I were going to do the lettering, how would I do it? Well, you know, if, if I carefully did the letters and painted around it, that just makes me really tired. Basically, I would paint the whole thing first and put the lettering on top. And then, even then, it's a back and forth, back and forth thing of, of uh, getting the lettering just so. And so it's like sculpting to get it right. So it's, it's very uh, labor intensive. Very left brain. And, and just the thought of having to make something even makes me tired. Okay, these are some rather abstract little flower things. Now I need a dark, 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 dark label color. But it can't be the same all over the place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab some of this, believe it or not, phthalo turquoise. I've got to clean my knife really carefully. Um, let's see, I will mix that with some of it with this Indian yellow for a nice green. I love the green that I get with this. The bottle is kind of, well, not, not kind of, is blacker in real life. But I like this greenish cast to it. And I'm going to take the brush that's already dirty and has the red on it. And that'll add even a further mixture to this. And that's going to be the edge of the bottle. I'm going to start with the label or just the bottle? Let's start with the label. The label's half the bottle. OK, I knew that. So I think, I think the li I'm going to have the bottle be green. I'm making it up. And the label be more of a black. Even the green is, is very dark. Okay, so we have this go down here. OK, 
Okay, so while I was thinking about that, I was in left brain mode. I'm already starting to get sucked in. Let's see, where does this bottle end? Because that's, we don't make, make sense with this here. I'm going to just draw an imaginary line with my head and in my head, <laughs> with my head. No, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to add some more red to that, make it really dark. That's a nice dark, nice neutral color. And I think I'll, uh, yeah, I'm tempted to put some of that stuff in, but I got to just stay on course here. It's easy to get distracted, start seeing all these things. Say, so, woohoo, I want to paint them. Okay, I'm going to put the dark in between here. I contaminated some of that red a little bit. We'll clean that up later. Okay. And where's the light source? Well, the light's hitting it from this way. The shadow's going over here. So it's going to be lighter there. But this is also under the shadow of the flowers. I don't want this to be too close to the shadow color. That would not be good. Then there'd be no separation. We can't have that. Because what's things that are important to me when I'm painting, and this is just me, not everybody has the same interest. I, I like things to be three-dimensional and have form. I like a lot of space, and I like the separation so that you can feel the space between the objects. So, that, so I, I don't stop until I achieve those goals. And I do have goals when I start off, start to paint. Or at least when I, you know, when I, okay, when I start out, I, I think about where I want to go. I have a plan. And then it's kind of like taking a vacation and not uh, just going away for a week and then, but not booking any hotels, just getting in the car and going and seeing where, where things take you. You kind of, you have an idea that you want to get to a certain place, but you're, you know, all the details in between, you're going to let them happen as they do. Um, sometimes... I have a more detailed route when I'm doing the painting, and I can figure out exactly where I need to go. And other times, it's one of those, woohoo, let's, <laughs> let's just see what happens. Um, this one's kind of in between. Like any good vacation, my objective is to have some fun. Okay, so let's give this bottle some fun some soul and some form. It's got to be lighter in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and put the highlights in first, which is just seems so bizarre, but if I don't put them in now, they'll get swallowed up. So there's some... I'm going to grab some of this yellow color I made. Let's see, there's a light here. And I'm going to grab some of this blue, because we don't want to be boring. And I like right down the middle was lighter. So you can see that this is definitely going to be at least a two-parter, maybe three. Okay, so now I need to get a lighter green. So we're creating form here. So I'll add a little bit of yellow to this green, and I may need to warm it up a little with... I'm totally contaminating stuff. You know, it's like the end of the end of the session. Okay, that's a little bit lighter. I think I'm going to go ahead and go over the label and put stuff in later. It needs to be warmer. I don't want to go straight into some of that Indian yellow, but I don't want to contaminate the whole pile up there. 
So I'll move a pile here where I can contaminate it freely and have it not be a problem. This is where I'm doing just a little brush mix. I want this bottle to be warm. Yeah, that's better. This will be a good start. All right, let's see where else. What else is happening with this bottle? There's some, that's part of the flower. Boy, you can really smell the paint when you're doing a, something this big. That's a happy smell. I'm working on creating some form here. So the sides a little lighter, a little warmer. We're going to kind of meet in the middle and have the light be in the middle. Yeah, I'm going to do the, I decided I'll do the, all the lettering, all that good stuff over the top after it dries. So all that nice little sketching I did is just going bye bye. I don't do huge detailed drawings because I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be locked in that early. Okay, so I need it to be lighter. I'm going to just kind of meet everything in the middle. Okay. I'm mix it right into that. I want to get rid of the uh, pencil marks. I'm going to have to put a little more paint on to do that. Yeah, there we go. It was just a little too thin to be able to achieve that. I'm going to stick this right in the middle and meet them blend so that they meet. a miracle to try and get this to come out in a short amount of time. I'm going right into the little flower. That's okay. Clean that up later. And then add some more green and blend. And our little time left. I like how this flower just turns into a soft little suggestion of something. And it can be as detailed or not, depending on where I go with this thing. So right now I'm blending up and down. I'll go from side to side in a second. Okay, starting to get some form. Just going to blend. It's a good thing because we only got a couple minutes left. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a giant cucumber. That's on fire down at the bottom. Okay, I'm stepping back to look at it. it. It does have form. I need to just add a little more green on the edges. And um, I hope that, that you'll come the next time and watch the show and see where we go with the, you know, I'm thinking this is going to be a three-parter. This is definitely going to be a three-parter because we'll do the flowers and the, uh, it may take the whole time to do the flowers next time. And then after that, we'll do the vase. 
and clean it up. So this will be a good complex still life on relationships. So next time on Give Your Wall Some Soul, you'll see that right now it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you're starting to get an idea that this is a bottle. You don't even know what this is. And you've got some fabric going here, but we've got some really cool color. So come back next time and see what happens on Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Thank you.